Hey boardies, welcome to Mass Games. Today I'm showing you the game Troya, or Troy. Now, I've already done an unboxing, so hopefully you've checked out uh, all the bits that's gone in with this. But basically this is a two-player asymmetrical game whereby we have the Trojans and the Greeks, and it's about the Siege of Troy. And just to let you know, as Homer narrated in the Iliad, different Greek states had signed the city of Troy, or sorry, sieged. Uh, for years as punishment for the abdication of Helen of Sparta by Paris of Troy. Citizens of both sides made offerings to the deities to gain their favour in order to help or in order to hinder. So he there are heroes on the battlefield. So if numerous heroes, I'm not going to be talking about kind of the more advanced one, which just um, changed things up a little bit. And I'm just going to be setting up the game and showing you how you play it and uh, what I think of it. So here are the pieces in play. So again, you can either be playing um, either side, it's up to you. And the aim of the game is ultimately to, if you're the Trojans, is to build that horse. And if you are the Greeks, it's basically to, to win the game. So, um, sorry, it's the, it's the Greeks who are building a horse. So you're going to have this piece here, and that's going to go here. And it's one of the ways you can win the game. You're going to have these various deities. These deities, doesn't matter who you have or where you put them, but they have to go in any random order you like along here. And what these basically represent are different god powers you can use. So one person's going to be sat here, somebody's going to be sat here. And uh, it's these guys over here that will be starting. So it's going to be um, the Trojans who start. And you're going to be an, uh, assembling these guys according to basically the place that you're facing. So Agamemnon is going to be facing this way. And we have Agamemnon facing here. They're all going to be placed in the middle of the board. That's called the combat zone. We have the defense zones and we have the protection zones. So, so the aim of the game is to get, um, in this instance, there's a couple of ways of winning as it's asymmetrical. Let's start here. So in this case, you need to try and build a horse. So you're going to get this horse in play. You're going to have, uh, you need to have the right cards. You can't play it, obviously, if it's incorrect. You're trying to get that horse built. So again, you need to go through your cards, keep hold of some maybe. And again, get that constructed. So that's something you'll be working on. What these guys are going to be doing is, and I'll tell you how you get these cards laid out. You're going to be playing certain cards, so you have to play Hector or Paris, that goes to there. Then you have to play the Paris card, you have to wait until you actually have one in your hand. And it goes here, then Hector, then both of them. So let me just uh, take these cards out again. You're going to shuffle these up, there are 27 cards. If nobody completes um, either of their objectives and all 27 cards are there, you're going to check on this state, and again, if there's another tie, ultimately you're going to have to replay the game. So what's going to happen is, starting these guys here, you're going to draw two cards initially. Uh, same with the opponent. And what you're going to be doing is trying to ultimately try to get certain sets that these deities are after to move your heroes forward. So in this instance, uh, let's see what we have in play. Uh, let me just sort out these cards quickly. So as you can see, there's various symbology going on here, uh, but ultimately you need to make sure your back's uh, this way up so your opponent can't see them. And you're going to have two cards. So let's just say these are the cards that we have. We're going to look at them. Again, again, your opponent won't see them, and you're going to see those symbols. And now you're going to look along this track. So again, we're playing uh, this side here. So in this instance, we're looking to say, right, okay, um, what things are we working towards? In this case, this is what we're looking at. You need to play one symbol here, which represents what we have for Poseidon. Poseidon here has a fish symbol. So you need to be playing out one card of the fish, which we have. So let's just say of our two cards we start off with, we play out one card. Then what happens is you're then activating what you've just triggered, that hero. So in this instance, we have um, this uh, this fish character. Obviously, Poseidon is his name, or Aquaman, if you want to use other kind of things. And we're now going to, let me, as it's, it's good, this isn't a directly overhead camera. You can kind of see quite clearly what we're looking to do. So in this instance, we have... Uh, Poseidon. So again, we pick up the chap who's got Ajax, who is the fish symbol. He moves forward two positions because you have exactly what's required. Then what happens, you trigger his ability. In this case, he moves somebody um, from this case, the protection zone, back a space or wherever that might be. So it's not an ideal move to make, so he wouldn't be doing that. So in this case, he might try and go for grapes. He hasn't got enough for grapes because he's only got two. So remember, he had two cards. Those are the two cards. Maybe he can move rams. He can't move rams either, he hasn't got enough. So he'll keep his hand hidden, and it's back to this character. Now, they have different things um, on the back, as you can see, so you don't quite know what they'll be doing. 
they've got two cards. In this instance, they might actually have something of interest. They have um, a couple of War Togs, which is fine. So that moves forward two positions. And that triggers because for them, uh, War Togs actually only need one, so they can keep hold of a card. And in this instance, you're moving something from, again, this zone, the defense, to the combat zone, or vice versa. So again, it's not ideal for that first round, you can only be probably drawing cards. So in this instance, we're going to draw another couple of cards. As you can see, I shuffle the deck first. So right now, um, I might probably go for the cheap guy. We have uh, side we've talked about, we won't bother with that. The next guy down we can't afford. Uh, we can't afford here. Ram 23. So we do have three rams. That's a great card to play. So we're going to play out three rams, one, two, three heads for Hermes. What's going to happen with Hermes? He's going to move forward two positions and triggering his ability, which means somebody else can move forward one position. So based on the cards I have, this is going to come up and it's going to come down here. So it's going to be more expensive for me going forward. So now I can see that what was cheap for me is now expensive and what was expensive for my opponent is now cheap. Um, I'm thinking, well, actually, now I can afford three grapes. So I'm going to start moving grapes forward by one. Now it's the opponent's turn. The opponent's thinking, right, what can I do? Because when you lay out these Trojan horses, the way you lay them out, you have to have two in your opponent's zone. Two in your opponent's zone allows you to then play out one of your, um, basically you're building your Trojan horse or moving Hector or Paris. That's what happens. So you're trying to get the right cards out to get two in the opponent's zone, obviously there for my opponent, here for me. And then what will happen is you, if you do have the right cards, if you do have a card you haven't yet played, so I've already played out the tail, I can't play out another tail, obviously. I'm trying to make that horse. Equally, I can't play out um, Hector if um, I need Paris. So in this instance, I need Paris. So then, then what happens, these reset, they go back to the center, and in this case, it'll be the opponent's turn. But it might be something like this will happen throughout the game. And the opponent's thinking, well, what do I do? Do I choose to try and bring this back a bit to stop this from happening, or do I try and rush myself? When I've played this game, I've lost so far. I haven't won a game of this yet. I've chosen to try and mitigate someone from reaching there and hope you know, I've, I'm just hoping as also they don't have the right cards because sometimes I've, you know, tried to reduce something rather than improve a gain. And actually it turned out that I'm going to try to focus on my own victory. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You know, what I think of the game, you know, the current rating on BGG is about 6.7. I'm giving this at least a 6.8. I find it quite interesting, quite compelling. It's quick. It's light. Uh, some people might not like the fact that it's a bit a bit back and forth, um, but I like the fact that these are practically the same uh, differences, you know, laying out the cards, but you have your own deck, uh, you don't know what your opponent has, I mean, you could memorise it, but I haven't bothered to do that. Uh, there are other abilities here as well, um, there are other things you can play as well, these are just the base sets, I haven't even tried out the other ones yet, but it's nice to see that you can have some quite big leaps going on in this game, as of course as you play it more and more, and uh, it's nice, it's nice to see that you can build things like a horse and you know, it's been very close every game. It's been, you know, four four steps out of five or or three steps um, out of four, so to speak, or one, two, three, four. Yeah, three out of four on both occasions. So it's been very close um, and very nice. It's, you know, it's a small board. It, it works very effectively. You know, I like the theme. I think it does work quite well in terms of that threshold. You're trying to meet it and can you fend it off? And like I said, I think it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, just one copy of basically what you should be doing. And again, that's effective too. Ultimately, you have various different things you can use. And uh, this is just showing you the base six that you can be using. But yeah, when do you want to draw up cards? When should you hold back cards? Or, you know, I needed a Paris card to try and win the end of the game. But equally, if I didn't play out a card which actually happened to have, you know, let's show you, you know, a Paris card on it. And again, I don't know the distribution on purpose. You know, I knew that I need to hold on to this card, but I knew that I had something which is close to my opponent's area, you know, that would have helped them to potentially get victory. And I chose to give up the card. I sacrificed it to allow me to actually try and, you know, give myself an extra round. So it's a good balancing act. You know, do you want to hoard your cards and then, you know, splurge them or actually, you know, be aware that, you know, how far have you actually pushed this? And I like the fact that, again, you know, you're moving your characters back each time. You know, I think there's quite a good bit of legs in this game. And uh, I found it very enjoyable. So hopefully you found that of interest. Please hit that like button if you enjoy the content. Share as well. Um, hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, um, yep, yeah, check that notification bell. Any other questions or comments, please check out that description. I reply very quickly to comments too. 
And yeah, this is GDM Games. This will be in the GDM uh, playlist. I've got plenty of play uh, playlists that people enjoy. And very much hope you look forward to, obviously, telling me what you think of this game. Thank you very much. And again, any questions, please let me know. That's all. Bye for now.